G'day football fans and welcome to a brand new video today here on Football Manager. We are doing just something a little bit different today. We are going to see just how much positions matter in Football Manager or, or kind of seeing how versatile some players are, I guess. Um, what we've done is we've spun a wheel. We have gone the top three players from each Premier League team. We've changed the positions up. I'll go through it in two seconds. I'll show you what position everyone is, how uh, badly affected some teams are and things like that. Um, and we're going to see if that makes a huge difference to who wins the league or if Manchester City are just going to do it again and again and again. Obviously, throughout history, we have seen, you know, a number of players changing positions like Jordi Alba started as a left winger. Um, Gareth Bale started as a left back. Aiden Hazard played for Chelsea and now he's on the bench for Real Madrid. Like, you know, people change their positions, change scenarios all the time. Um, and, you know, today we're going to test out that theory to see just how much it matters or, you know, is Kevin De Bruyne going to end up with uh, like averaging a 7.5 across the season, regardless of what position he is in. We're going to see that today. Anyway, let's get through each team, see what positions have been affected and, you know, make a judgment on who's going to be worst off. Just before we get into that, make sure you do leave a set like down below, subscribe if you're new around here, comment what you think of the video, any more ideas for stupid things like this where I just come up with a, a dumb thing and then see what happens, let me know. Um, Let's get into it. So the first team, of course, first came off the rank, Arsenal. And you know what? I think they've been pretty shafted because they've got Gabriel Jesus. He's a holding midfielder now with tackling of nine, uh, marking of eight. He's got very good mentals though. So, I mean, maybe he's not going to be that bad. And I mean, he he does press from the front really well. So, I'm uh, you know, might not be that terrible. The only issue is then that also Bukayo Saka, uh, he's also a defensive midfielder now. You'll notice that a lot of the positions are still like somewhat coloured. I didn't take them down to zero. Um, I took them down to like, uh, you know, five, eight, you know, just random numbers that aren't very high. Um, he's now a defensive midfielder. He, you know, looks a bit better potentially defensively than um, Gabriel Jesus will be, but... You know, they've definitely got a log jam there now with um, Thomas Partey and holding midfield as well as Jesus, and it's going to be a bit tough. Um, they then, uh, you know, the third highest rated player on Arsenal is Martin Odegaard, who's now their, now their striker, um, which sounds great, really. I mean, it says he's an elite striker, and I mean, you know, he, he might not score 40 goals in a season, but maybe he will. I don't know. It's definitely going to be weird going back through some of these teams because I can't actually remember who they are. I just got to like look down the list and wait for something to look weird. Um, with, um, with Aston Villa, it's it's weird. Um, Alex Moreno is now a central attacking midfielder. He looks quite good really still. I mean, I, I, obviously he is a decent defender, but maybe he'll just be good at pressing from the front. Um You know, isn't the greatest of passes and vision, so he may not end up with too many assists, but he's quick very quick uh, he'll be probably good at dribbling with the ball through the middle um i guess we'll uh, we'll see how that one works out it might actually be one of the better ones to be fair not so much of a better one i mean coutinho at striker maybe it makes sense he could probably do a job there it's not necessarily going to be a brilliant job um but who knows i mean maybe this will fix all of his problems maybe having to track back less gets rid of all of his injury worries maybe it you know, clears his head. I don't know. Um, the other one is um, Diego Carlos, who, uh, I mean, it does say he's out for eight months, but I'll fix that shortly. They're going to have to do a lot of crossing, I guess, and hope that he can do the business. Next team down the line is Brentford. And I mean, two of them are not that interesting, to be completely honest. I mean, one of them, Christopher Ayer, he's now on the left wing. Um, he's got finishing of 12. That's sensational. Um, he's now on the left wing. He's not a good crosser, but I guess if he can cut in and do anything, we'll see. Um, I'll fix his injury. Um, and then after uh, Aya, um, they've then got a uh, central attacking midfield pairing of uh, Tony and Mbuemo. Look, it didn't turn out to be too interesting for some of them. He'll probably do a decent job as like a second striker or something like that in behind someone. Um, and then, then Mbuemo, um, just the same really. It's not as interesting, is it? It's not as good. Um, it did take a while for some of them, like um, uh, Lucas Paqueta, because he plays, like he can play holding midfield, he can play like anywhere across the midfield, he can play anywhere across attacking midfield. It took like six spins to get like whatever it is he's got. It took like, it took forever. Anyway, um, that's, you know, they're an average one. I don't think it'll affect that much. So probably be just about as good anyway. Next up is Brighton Hove Albion and they, they've been 
they've been shafted. Moises Casado is now a right back. Um, I mean, he'll, again, he'll probably be fine. It says he's a wonder kid. Um, he probably will still do quite well. Just that he can't cross. I mean, maybe he'll be a good, like, inverted right back, but meh. Um, the, um, Alexis McAllister's a centre back. That's probably the issue. That's probably where the issue in lies, where it is. He's very good. He's very, very good. Um, yeah, he's not going to be a great centre back. Like, he's not tall. I mean, he's a bit like Alexis McAllister. What? He's a bit like Lissandra Martinez going in there. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe it'll be all right. I don't know. We'll see. The other one they've got, uh, where is he? It is Lewis Dunk. Lewis Dunk is now an attacking midfielder. I, I don't know what that's going to do. He's got decent passing, to be fair. Decent passing, decent vision. Maybe he'll be brilliant. I don't know. We'll see. Then for Chelsea, they've got Angola Conte, Thiago Silva, and Raheem Sterling. Angola Conte, now a centre-back. Uh, look, he'll be the shortest centre back, but he'll probably be like one of the best still because he uh, he's be brilliant. Like that's he'll be he'll be great. He'll be all right, I think. Um, again, I'll get rid of the injuries. Don't worry about it. Um, Thiago Silva and Raheem Sterling, both central midfielders. Raheem Sterling, I think, could kind of be like what like a great Mazala, like running for like running through midfield with the ball, arriving late in the box, finishing moves. You know, I think he'd be. Could be quite good. Um, Thiago Silva, much more of a holding midfielder, I guess. But at the end of the day, like, he's not going to be bad. I mean, he says he's a world-class midfielder. It's not going to be too bad, is it? Next up is Crystal Palace, and it is Wilfred Zaha, of course. Joachim Anderson and then Mark Gurhi. We have got Wilfred Zaha playing in central midfield. Sort of similar to uh, Raheem Sterling, I guess, because he's wanted by Manchester City, I guess, to fill the De Bruyne hole. Uh, I guess. Interesting. Um, and then uh, he's a central midfielder. Could be a good Mazzala. Who, know, who knows? Um, and then Tottenham want jo Joachim Anderson, who's now a right midfielder. I don't know why Tottenham want him, unless they're converting him to a wing back or something, but I guess we'll see. And then on the other wing is Mark Kerr. He, 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 you know, he's got the physicals for it, for sure. Not bad finishing for a centre back again, but not too sure how that one will go. For Everton, there's quite a bit of change, really. It is Dominic Calvert-Lewin is now a left back. Um, so, I mean, he'll probably be quite good at it, really. I mean, tackling and marking, bit of an issue. Um, it would be quite good, I think, getting up and down the pitch, um, as long as he can stay fit. Um, the next one is, uh, where is he, where is he, where is he? Uh, Idrissa Gay uh, is now on the right wing. Um, again, not necessarily his strengths. Um but I, you know, maybe you thought it was crazy when Gareth Bale moved forward into a wing position, so it might work out. I don't know. Um, and then lastly, Yeri Mina has gone up front, and that sounds brilliant. Really, that I like. Who's going to stop him in the air? Who's going to stop him? Next up is Fulham, and we've got. <laughs> it's a bit weird, but we've got an Andreas Pereira right back, and there's a few right backs that are you know similar sort of ilks as we go through these, but. Um, I think he'd actually do a really good job there. I think he'll be sensational, to be honest. Um, him and a couple others, like, they could sort of suit just about any team, um, whether it is, you know, playing as an inverted right back, player, whether it is bombing on, whatever it is, I think he could do a really good job of it. Um, and next up, they've got, uh, of course, <laughs> Alex Mitrovic. He's now on the left wing. I mean, if you go to... If he could play as, like, a... Isn't there a wide target man position? Uh, why not? I mean... He'll do a great job as like an inside forward or something like that. He's a perfectionist. He's amazing. But um, And then lastly, probably less good, uh, Jao Polina is a striker now. Um, he's got good heading. He's he's rather tall, so that's good. And he's got good tackling, so maybe pressing from high up will work out. Maybe. Next, one of the perhaps less interesting ones, because um, it's not that much change really, kind of. Um, Tyler Adams is now on the left wing uh, instead of basically everywhere else. Uh, so, I mean, if you can do a job uh, in all of these other positions, you can probably do a job on the left. Um, and then in striker is Mark Rocker. Again, like, he might be able to do a job. I mean, he's not great finishing or shooting, but he'll be able to, he'll do something. He's only scored 10 goals in his club career, but he'll do something. Um, and then Sinistera, also a striker. Not a whole, like, not a huge change from being a winger, but... 
probably quite decent, really. Next up, Leicester City, and they've got some superstar uh, wide backs here with uh, James Madison now right back. Again, similar to Andreas Pereira, where he's probably going to do quite well there, actually. It's probably going to be really good, like... Crossing, he can get up and down the pitch. He's probably going to be quite good. Then Yuri Tielemans is now a left back, which, I mean, he's wanted by Manchester City. You, I mean, it suits if he's going to play as like an inverted coming on the inside in there. Maybe it will work out, but we'll see. Um, and then um, uh, Johnny Evans is an attacking midfielder. So that part didn't really work out. He's got really good vision for a centre back, 15 vision. Um, so, you know, I guess we'll see how that one works out. I mean, uh, sure, but give it a go. On to one of the big boys now, and it is Mo Salah, Virgil van Dijk, and Thiago Alcantara have all changed, and they are Mo Salah, the central midfielder. Sounds sensational, honestly. Like, with his physicals, his dribbling, all passing vision's great. Like, he's going to be fantastic. Again, probably a Mazala, but a very, very good one. Um, then we've got Thiago Alcantara, who is on the right wing. See, again, just looks good, looks fine, yeah. I'm 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 here for it. Virgil van Dijk as a striker is less natural feeling or less like you could believe it, but again, he's got the physicals, he can his like bloody mentals are very good. He great heading, probably do a job scoring the ball, I guess. Then come my boys, Manchester City, and it is uh Kevin De Bruyne, Erling Haaland, and Bernardo Silva. We have got right back Kevin De Bruyne. Again. Uh, who is it? Andreas Pereira, Madison, Kevin De Bruyne. Hey, I think he's going to be quite good. I mean, yeah, his tackling's not great and his marking's not great and he's probably going to be, you know, not great defensively, but that's fine when you can do what he does. Stamina's good, work rate's good, technicals, all of them are brilliant. Um, I think he's going to be quite good. He's legendary right back. Um, and then uh, who are the other ones? Bernardo Silva and Erling Haaland. Uh, Erling Haaland's now a right winger. I really wish it was more of a... I wish he was like a centre-back or something. We got to see that. But, I mean, it landed on right wing. So, that's where I've put him. Sort of similar to Mitrovic, I guess, where it's a bit weird to see them out wide, but he could probably do a job. Um, and he'd probably still get a good rating, I guess. Uh, we'll see. Um, and then, lastly, Bernardo Silva is now up front. So, I guess he's swapped with Erling Haaland. And he'll do a great job of it, won't he? Like, off the ball is 18. 16 finishing. Great f physicals. Great mentals. Uh, I think we've probably just unleashed a beast, really, as long as he just scores, really. That's all you need. Then across town at Manchester United, it is Bruno Fernandes, Casemiro, and Rafael Varane. Again, Bruno Fernandes to right back. Pereira, Madison, De Bruno, Fernandes. Insane. Absolutely insane. Um, <laughs> Again, I mean, he's tackling and marking. Yeah, it's not good. Positioning. Yeah, it's terrible. Uh, like, I get it. But I think he could do it. Like, look, he's... Really, he is so good. Oh, that is ridiculous. I'm probably like, um, you know, he could probably do a job. Um, next up, who was it? Casemiro's left back. Probably less good, but it's better defensively, I guess. Um, if you want to, you know, sort of have him sit and have the other wide back bomb on, you've got the perfect two for it. Um, and then uh, who's the other one? Uh, the Varane. Uh, Raphael Varane's on the left wing. Um. Very good physicals. Did not know he was that good physically, to be honest with you. But, you know, he'll, he'll, we'll see. Then for Newcastle United, it is Gimaraes, Botman, and Trippier. And, uh, look, it's fine, I guess. Um, I mean, Gimaraes is a striker. Probably do a decent job of it. Looks pretty good. Um, I'm trying to really fire through this now. I realise I've been going on for absolutely forever. Um, then, Kieran Trippier is a... Attacking midfielder, as long as he's given room to roam, it looks pretty good, really. I mean, yeah, why why not? He's got, got decent vision, good crossing, passing. Why not? Um, and then lastly, who's the other one? Sven Botman in central midfield. Probably just a bit of a holder, but again, probably do a very good job of it. Like, why, why couldn't he? I mean, he looks pretty good to me. Next up at Nottingham Forest, we've got Gustavo Scarpa, who, again, would fit the absolute mould of... Uh, Madison, blah, 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 blah. Um, but he's just left-footed, so, I mean, it's a bit different, But and he's not great physically. But maybe he'll do a job. We don't know. I mean, we'll, uh, we'll see. Um, then next, it's uh, boring people, like Rima Froiler's now on the right wing. He'll probably do an okay job, I guess. Um, and then uh, Felipe, the old bugger, he, he's up front. Great mentals. Could probably... Well, he's not got great off the ball, does he? He doesn't have good finishing. He's got good heading, though. Maybe. 
she got good jumping reach? We'll see. For Southampton, it's really easy because they're all in a row. Um, it's Mr. Orsic, who's now a central midfielder. Probably pretty good. Probably good to have him in there with those long shots. Um, James Ward-Prowse out to the right wing, which sounds great to me. Wanted by Chelsea. I mean, it's just like David Beckham, isn't it? He'll just be out on the right. He'll swing a bunch of crosses in. We'll see. Um, and then Carl Walker-Peters, also on the right wing. A bit less good, but, you know, we'll see. Maybe he'll do a good job. Uh, maybe he'll prove us all wrong. Or oh, Tottenham, I think I've made a boo-boo, but we'll move on from it. Harry Kane, right back. What's with the right backs? What is with the right back? I think he'll be great as well. Um, and then uh, Human Son um, is in central midfield, similar to um, Mo Salah. I think it'd be very good there. I, I don't see why not. Um, then the, the boo-boo I think I made, Benton Kerr, I think he's meant to be a winger, but he can also play attack in midfield. I think we'll just go for it and see what they do with him. Um, I, it wasn't what I intended. I don't know how I've done that. Why not, though? For West Ham, as I have an absolute sneezing attack, they've got a couple of new left backs. Lucas Paqueta. Left back looks pretty good, to be completely honest with you. I, why not? Looks pretty good. Um, unfortunately, Declan Rice, also a left back. Again, looks like he do a great job there. I'm not going to say he's... Not going to be good, it's just weird. And then lastly, it's someone also not interesting um, that I've already forgotten. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Um, it's right wing Kurt Zuma. Not confident. He is wanted by someone though. Who? Arsenal want him though. So Arsenal are keen on right wing Zuma, so why not? Then lastly, we've got Wolverhampton Wanderers and Ruben Neves is now a central defender. That sounds pretty good to me. I mean, he's... Maybe lacking a little bit in hype. I mean, Liverpool are keen on him. Why not? Might work out. We'll see. Next up, um, they've then got Sarabia is now a holding midfielder, which sounds horrible. Um, best of luck to them. Then look, I've got, I've got to tell you, I've been looking at this for ages. I don't. I, it's, it's someone, but I just, I just don't know. Um, anyway, let's go to the end of the season. Let's have a have a look to see who's performing well. I'm going to say Kevin De Bruyne has still been absolutely incredible. I think Bruno Fernandes will do a job too. Hopefully, we see like. Bernardo Silva top scorer, or I don't know, uh, uh, Virgil Van Dijk scored twenty goals in a season, or something like that. Let's uh, let's go to the end of the season. All right, so it is the end of the season. Let's get into it. Let's see who won what. Um, I mean, already you can see something down there. There's a bit of a spoiler. Um, let's go to Manchester City. They did it. They bloody did it by one point over Liverpool, and and then everyone else, basically. Um, Erling Haaland was still the top scorer from uh, the right wing. Ivan Tony third. Oh, he was only... I think he was like... He was an attacking midfielder. Player of the match, James Wood, perhaps from the wing, was up there. Uh, anyone else here weird? I mean, Salah had a great season for midfield. Don't know how many goals he scored, but we'll see shortly. Hasn't changed too much, though, in terms of the league positions, really. I mean, it's just about exactly what you'd expect, like, from any given season that you play on Football Manager. Um... Manchester City, how did they do in that? What about the Champions League? Uh, they also won the Champions League final. All right, cool. Um, uh, players, let's start with them. Why not? In terms of average ratings, oh dear. All right. So Erling Haaland um, is a cheat code as a winger. is but 35 goals and eight assists. Bernardo Silva from striker. Jesus did them favours, didn't it? Kevin De Bruyne is a right back. Still averaged 7.15. Played 60 games. Um, just the one goal. Eight assists. That was pretty good. 50, 40 goal involvements for Bernardo Silva is absolutely immense. All right. Anyway, my allergies are going absolutely mental. I've just had like a three minute uh, a break, basically. Anyway, next up, Manchester United. Who played well? Varane from left wing was their highest performer. Uh, sorry, what? 14 goals. Can we see... Um, we can't see how he scored his goals, can we? I don't know if we can see how he scored them. Like, were they... We, I don't think we can see if they were all with his head or... I don't know. He had a great time in the Europa League, though. Bloody hell. Look at him go. As for the other players, so right back, Bruno Fernandes was better than um, Kevin De Bruyne. I mean, average rating only slightly, but five more assists, another goal... Did pretty damn well. And then Casemiro, disappointing from left back. But, I mean, when the other players are doing this well, it doesn't really matter now, does it? Next up, Newcastle United, where Kieran Trippier is their second highest average rating from attacking midfield. He is, however, listed for transfer. I don't really understand that. Um, and then who else was it? It was Sven Botman, who can now play multiple roles. Played 37 games, was decent. Who was the other one? Gimaray, sit down here. 
6.84 average rating, but he did score 17 goals, which is pretty good. I mean, you'd take that if, if you signed him. You'd be pretty happy with that if that was his like, first season at striker. Um, next up, Nottingham Forest. Didn't really care about this one, but the best average rating was right back Scarpa, who's now wanted by uh, Crystal Palace of all teams. Um, next up, Felipe scored 12 goals, which is decent. Who was the bloody other one? Oh, Remo Freuler. Didn't play. <laughs> Didn't play. Okay, well, that's that's an L. That's not good. That's, a definite, that's definitely not good. Next up, Southampton. Who was good here? James Ward-Prowse from right wing, yep. 14 assists in the season, yep. Makes sense. Um, who are the other ones? Orsic from midfield. Four goals, three assists. That's fine. And Kyle Walker-Peters, I mean, really, he was second fiddle to James Ward-Prowse, wasn't he? Um, two goals, one assist. Wanted by Arsenal, though, strangely enough. Sure. Next up is, of course, Tottenham Hotspur and Harry Kane from right back, a 7.3. Mental. Midfield, Hume Min Song was brilliant. Uh, who's the other one for Tottenham? Oh, Benton Kerr. Okay, scored 12 goals, 4 assists. That's a pretty good... And now he's worth an absolute ton. I mean, look, power to him. He, he, he was pretty good. Next up, we have West Ham, of course, and left-back Declan Rice was very good. Not as good as Kurt's... I mean, I mean, uh, to be fair, better average rate. Like, I get that. But 13 goals, 6 assists for Kurt Zuma from right wing. I think we're learning the position doesn't really matter that much. Because um, if you're good, you'll be good. Um, who's the third person? Oh, Paqueta. Uh, less exciting for Paqueta, but probably because Declan Rice played the same position, I guess. So it's kind of... Maybe I should have not allowed people to have the same position as someone else changed to. That doesn't make sense, but yeah. Anyway, next up was whoever, Wolves. And it was... Pablo Sarabia at, at holding midfield... Eight assists from holding with probably corners, but eight assists is pretty good. Who was the other one? Oh, man, this is a struggle. I think it was... Where's Neves? I think they've sold Ruben Neves. Did they sell... No, there he is. From centre-back, four assists, 6.93. That's pretty good. I'll take that. You're, like, you're happy enough with that for a centre-back for a team that finished 10th. That's that's fine. Still cannot tell who, who the other person was. Like, I just... Did I only do two for them? I don't understand. Was it Kalajic? No, he's still just a striker. I don't, I don't, I don't know what I did. I got, I don't know what happened. Um, oh, well, moving on. Um, next is Bournemouth, and oh god, who the hell did we do for them? This is a struggle. Oh, Jefferson Lerma, who you know, fairly average rating, I guess. Transfer range joining Cruz Azul of all places. That's a weird one. Um, who the hell else was it for them? Oh, Solanke at left back, definitely. That's one of them. Um, and he was, you know, one of the better performers. He did decent for left back. And he was wanted by, I mean, Leeds. I mean, they finished last. So hopefully he's wanted by a Premier League team, maybe. Um, and who was their third person? Very weird that Zab Zabani just didn't play at all. That's very weird. But he's not the player that we've changed. Oh, it was Lu Lewis Cook. That was it. It was Lewis Cook. He's now an attacking mid striker who's got 13 goals and three assists. That's pretty decent. You'll take that for, I mean... They finished last, but he's their top scorer. So that's fine, I guess. Um, next up, Arsenal. Of course, Odegaard. The striker Odegaard scored 24 goals, got 10 assists. That's very good, isn't it? Average ratings, though. Bukayo Saka. Oh, they, damn it, they trained him to be a left winger, you bastard. That's boring. Um, but he did very good, really. Um, I want to see, We can't see what position he played, did we? Or can we? Don't think we can see what position he would have played mostly, which is annoying, but you know, he was their highest average rating by a mile. Defensive midfield Gabby Jesus was also very good. 7.17, 7 assists, 1 goal. He was good. I mean, only 5, five yellow cards. I mean, 8 yellow cards on the season, 1 red, but pretty good. Can't complain with that. That's that you, you take it, I guess. Aston Villa... Um, who was it? It was Alex Moreno who's now listed for transfer. That's not good. One goal, two assists. Didn't work out, did it? Did not work out the experiment of putting him to attacking midfield. Um, the other ones were... It was Diego Carlos, the striker, who got 18 goals. Who's now wanted by Chelsea and Manchester United. That's why I made this video. 30-year-old Diego Carlos, the striker, scored eight, like 15 Premier League goals in a season. 18 all up, 
and he's now wanted by Manchester United and Chelsea. What? Um, I don't even... What? Who was the third person? Um, oh, it was uh, Phil Coutinho, who... I mean, five goals, less good. Look, I mean, Diego Carlos is the exciting one, but, I mean, you you know, he did decent, unpredictable. I mean, you know, about what you expect Philip Coutinho to do, I suppose, really. Next up is Brentford, and in terms of good performers, it's, well, how is this happening? I don't understand. Christopher Iyer has scored 11 goals, three assists, an average rating of 7.18 on the season. He was very good. Well, I don't understand. Um, who's their third? Because, I mean, obviously, Ivan Tony was sensational, but he was always going to be. The other one was Mbermo, who... Oh. Yikes. Didn't play one game. Did not play one game. That's not good. That didn't go well, did it? Next up is Brighton, and it was McAllister at centre-back at a 7.09 and is wanted by Tottenham. So that went well. Casado at right-back. 7.08, that went well. And then Lewis Dunk at attacking midfield. Six goals. I'm s this is breaking my head. Like, I don't understand how people are doing well. Like, surely some of them have got to be bad. But, they're, like, Lewis Dunk's done decent. Six goals, three assists. That's that's fine. McAllister is a centre-back. Fine. Three player of the match awards. One red. No, no yellow cards on a season. One red. But... Mad, absolutely mental. Um, next up is Chelsea, and all right, I've already seen bad news, but N'Golo Kante at centre back was great. Yeah, it makes sense. Seven point one five, just two yellow cards in the season. He was very good, just two assists, no goals, but that's he's not a goal scorer. That's fine. Um, Raheem Sterling was the other one. Where's Sterling? Oh, oh, Raheem Sterling only played three games. Oh, that's gone back. He's world-class midfielder. and played three. Did he get injured? Uh, nope. Nope. And then Thiago Silva only played seven games. Two assists. Average rating of seven. And then they shafted him. What have Chelsea done? What are they doing? So many people available for the under-21s. What are they doing? They just have way too many players. Like, they just have way too many players. And they've gone and signed Horter as well. Well, don't really understand, but okay, sure. Well, that one didn't work out, did it? Next up, we have got Crystal Palace. Wilfred Zaha, the central midfielder, very good. As you'd expect, really. Like, I mean, that's how I expected Sterling to go, really. But, I mean, this is what happens when you play him. Average rating of 7.08 on the season. Eight goals, five assists. Pretty damn good. Who else was it? Gohi at left wing, 7.02 rating. And then Joachim Anderson. Less good, but, I mean... I mean, played. I mean, he played behind Michael Elise, who is now wanted by Arsenal. So, of course, he's going to not play as much and probably not be confident and play well. As for Everton, right wing Idrissa Garnage was their highest average rating. Pretty damn good. Seven. I mean, two goals, seven assists isn't fantastic. And Calvert Lewin at left back gets two assists. Yeri Mina at striker, fourteen goals. I mean, less than Neil Morpé, so it makes it look bad. Uh, because you wouldn't expect Neil Morpé to score 20 goals in a season ever. Um, but Yeremini scored 14, so I'm pretty... That's, uh, that's that's probably a win. Next up, it is Fulham and... Uh, what? Oh, anyway. Left wing Mitrovic, 14 goals, 2 assists. Best average rating of the people that played. Pretty good. Right back, Andres Pereira. Pretty good. Um, who was the... Was it William? No. It was uh, Polina, who can now play... They've tra He was just a striker, but they've trained him to play centre-back. He scored eight goals, got four assists. That's uh, fine. I mean, as long as someone else is scoring the goals, which, I mean, Mitrovic was doing and Vinicius was doing. Is that... Oh, he's leaving the club, though. Hmm. That didn't work out. I think they got relegated. So they may be a big loser of this experiment. Um, next up, Leeds United. It was Tyler Adams at left wing was their best rate. And as I said, like when we were looking at him, it was like, well, he can play basically everywhere else. It's like he's probably just going to fit in where, wherever you put him. Um, who are the other ones? Who? Uh, Sinistera, 16 goals in the season's pretty good. You'll take that. Um, not not too mad for that. Um, average rating of 6.84, pretty good. Um, who the bloody hell was the other one? It wasn't Bamford. Who the heck was it? 
I'm so confused. Some of these are, can, are really breaking my brain. Because who was it? Oh, it was... I'm so dumb. He was right. It's Mark Rocker. Who didn't do too well. He came off the bench 22 times in a season. Um, scored one goal. It didn't go well. Average rating of 6.59 in the league. You can't quite see, but not not great. Um, and then Leicester City, I think that's just about last. I oh, know we haven't got to Liverpool yet. Average rating, James Madison at right back. Best rating. Fantastic. Yuri Tielemans at left back. Fantastic. And he's wanted by big clubs. Like he's, I mean, he's, con- oh no, they signed him to a new contract. So better get money for him. And then Johnny Evans at attacking midfield. Now wanted by West Ham. Not brilliant, honestly. I mean, it didn't go, that that experiment didn't go well. It wasn't a um, Diego Carlos by any stretch of the imagination. Then Liverpool, oh my days. Wow. 51 appearances, 32 goal involvements for Mo Salah from midfield. Absolutely incredible. Thiago at right wing, 7.36 average rating, 25 goal involvements. Virgil van Dijk from striker, 28 goal involvements. So does just being tall do the job? Is that all you need? Is that all you need in football managers? Just to be tall and good in the air? I don't understand. I don't understand. Look, I've I've sorted them by like I've got them just in a short list. This is all the people that it is, minus whoever it is for wolves that I just can't figure out. And looking at it, the winners are really Virgin and Dyke. <laughs> Incredible. I I'd like Diego Carlos is that's the one I can't really believe. A um, few players are wanted by other teams, but I mean, that's ex- James Madison, the right back, is wanted by Real Madrid. That's pretty exciting. Um, Walker Peters won by Arsenal. Uh, no. Other than that, I mean, nothing else in terms of transfers. I mean, big clubs want Tielemans, but that's that can happen in any save, I suppose. Um, Assist, Salah, Silva. Player of the matches, Erling Haaland. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Iran is up there with this, with the uh, player of the matches, which is pretty cool. Um, average rating, though, the king was Erling Haaland. So it probably doesn't matter where you put Erling Haaland um, is what I'm learning. So probably um, if you put him, yeah, literally anywhere, he'll uh, do a good job for you. Three, I mean, Geta was doing the job when when Bryce wasn't in. It's good to, good to see people struggled anyway uh there's some losers there's some winners what we've learned though is uh, if you're tall and good at heading and like decent physically right because Diego carlos yeah decent physicals he's off the ball is nine but he scored 15 premier league goals off the ball of nine finishing of seven and he scored 15 premier league goals what what how did that happen what happened uh, Diego Carlos is a, a lost striker of our generation. That is insane. Anyway, that'll wrap up today's video. I don't even know what it was, honestly. Thank you for watching it. Make sure you leave us a like down below. Subscribe if you're new. Comment what you thought of it. What else we should do. If we should do it with, with literally every player in the Premier League. Let me know what you reckon. And um, I'll see you next time, I guess. Peace. <laughs>